Wrong button. All right. That's that's what you get. That's what you get. Congratulations. Here we go. Three, two, one, and. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I should actually take pitch lessons so I could be on key. Next time I'll do it again. Welcome to Great Night. I'm Brian Brushwood. Joined as always by my BFF. Maybe, or maybe that's a lie and a trick you see. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull back the curtain. Uh, all right, let's be real, people. Uh, this this was this was a heavy heavy weekend. A lot happened uh, in the political sphere. Not the least of which was my second viewing of Fargo season five. While I was watching with Andrew Heaton, was interrupted by news of an attempted assassination of our soon to be commander in chief. Luckily for this episode of Great Night, we have. The person I respect most when it comes to politics joining us, because Justin Robert Young is off over at the RNC actually covering the real story, we've got Michael Television, Mike TV! <laughs> yeah, th- I do want to say thank you, Brian. I know, I know, you, do, I know you do have some, a few friends that are pundits, but I do appreciate the fact that you see my perspicacity in this regard. Well, I mean, I mean I, I, the thing is, is like you were there for... Uh, uh, you were you were there for JFK's assassination. Yes, you yeah, were I at was, Ford's yeah. theater. I, I you were there was... when James Garfield got shot at that random convention. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the Aaron the Aaron Burr. Uh, a- a- Aaron yeah, Burr. Yeah, 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 I, I, all that. Yeah, I was there. I was there. You know, like of course. A- Aaron yeah. Burr. B o o r. He <laughs> was a Burr, if you ask me. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I, I already spilled my stuff. Uh, basically, we were in the middle of, uh, it was my second watch of uh, Fargo season five, and I just, uh, I did the thing where I'm like, hey, let's just watch one episode, Andrew Heaton, the second episode. He was like, well, maybe one more. And, you know, Wallace is hanging out on the couch and all that stuff. And then, and then, uh, and then he gets. He, he's like, "Who is that actor? I feel like I know that actor from somewhere. Is that the kid from Stranger Things?" And he pulls out his phone and he goes, "Trump has just been shot." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he looks and he kind of, for about two minutes, we stop and he goes, "Well, I'm sure we'll find out what happens. Go ahead, <laughs> hit resume." <laughs> and yes, it was that kid from Stranger Things. <laughs> wow, that, yeah, that, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Considering I, I know, I mean, obviously, Heaton, his entire life is predicated on politics. He's, he's like, oh yeah, I, I, apparently, uh, according to my phone, Trump's been shot. But nah, I guess we'll just we'll keep with that. That's that seems a bit uh, antithetical to like. Well, what I, it, it, what, uh, that, it's a testament to how much he loves the show. Bonnie, right? Bonnie, Bonnie rubbed it in my face because the way I found out about 9/11, and some people have already heard this story was i got a phone call uh you met my friend cj johnson right yes yeah so okay so uh it is it is 8 10 in the morning uh, uh beautiful blue skies <laughs> and i get a phone call and multiple calls and i get up and i'm like hello yes what and and again this is where i always have to defend myself you have to remember that in the previous week a paraglider had t- tangled themselves up on the Statue of Liberty. Okay. And and so when the phone rings and I'm like, hey, what's up? It's very early in the morning, CJ. CJ is like, hey, man, a plane hit the World Trade Center. It's kind of crazy. And I was like, <laughs> and I clicked a button and I turned on the TV and I saw a building with smoke. And in this like annoyed moment of, of sleepy clarity, I said, what about this makes you think I won't be seeing it all day long? <laughs> <laughs> and so and so he's like, well, I just thought it was interesting and maybe you would be interested. I'm like, okay, I'm going back to bed. Um, turns out uh, it was what I watched all day long. <laughs> yeah. How, how, long, how, long, how long did you actually watch? Because for me, I, I actually made it to work. I had to be in super early. I made it all the way to work. And and one of the people that I worked with, she's like, "You need to go home right now." And I'm like, "Wait, what?" You know, like I wasn't listening to the radio; I was just listening to music. So I dr- I drive all the way in, and she's like, "You got to go back right now." That like somebody crashed into like there's one. It was at this point point time. It was just one plane. You know, like right. So I was like, I was like, oh, okay, I guess I, I I had no idea the gravity. 
And then, and then I remember uh, this has happened a few times. The first time I listened to Nirvana's Nevermind, I put on, I put on, I put the album in, and I went to get sit down. And I just didn't sit down. I just sat there and was like, <gasps> and I did the same thing with with that when that attack happened. I turned it on and I just stood in front of the TV for like three hours until my until my roommates got up and I was like, guys, you got to like, and so yeah, yeah. Pretty nutty. Uh, uh, man, there, there, there is a story that does not belong to me that I want to tell that I've told around <laughs> the campfire a few times. Uh, we'll, we'll see if, if we ever get back to it. But let me desperately try to diverge from that sure. and instead ask you, where were you when you saw that uh, uh, that that that? Uh, I, I, I just can't I can't deny one of the greatest performances ever like number one let me get my shoes and then okay now let's go and he's like wait wait think of it and then he steps yeah. up and yeah. he takes he poses for one of the greatest photo ops yeah. of yeah. all time yeah. and it's like the moment the like ask chat GPT to make a better what photo no, it could never swept happen, yeah. the election I mean, I mean, for this you, year? Did you see that they actually there were some there were some photos that people actually analyzed with the golden circle ratio, and they're like, "This is a perfect like it's a perfect they are perfect photos." Of it. And well, like, I, I, oh, and that's amazing. Also, that I believe that was a New York Times photographer, yeah. and, and I believe he has a long legacy of capturing incredible shots like that. And keep in mind, he was not that close. Yeah, he heard the shots and ran yeah. to the front. To, to get the shot. <laughs> he, and, and I believe the quote they said in the New York Times was, I wanted to get the shot. Hope I didn't get shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> and and right, boy, yeah. did he ever, man. Uh, it's it's really remarkable. Um, uh, uh, Daniel J. Newman says it was AP photography. Um, but yeah, that, that photo is going to be a thing. So where were you when you found out that so, Donald J. Trump is our next president? So it's funny. I actually get alerts on my I, I have about three or four nurse news services, and I get alerts whenever anything happens. So I'm constantly looking at my phone all day. Like, oh, hey, this just happened. And, and sometimes Reuters will get ahead of him. Sometimes Washington Post will get ahead of it. Sometimes New York Times will get ahead of it. Sometimes the National Review. But like, but I'll, I'll be like, oh, okay. So, uh, so, I, so Isabella and I are watching... I think we were watching Seinfeld because she's never seen Seinfeld. So I'm like, let's watch Seinfeld. So I think we were watching Seinfeld. Now, like, hold on. That's the reverse of the story I always hear. I always hear that people learned English by watching Seinfeld, but she's learning Yiddish by watching yes, Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. She's, and she's, she's, literally, she's literally learning. It's, it's funny. She fell in love with the Larry David, like, like uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. She loved, and she's like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm like sweetheart, if you love this show, you're going to love Seinfeld because it's effectively, like, this is, like, this is, the this is the the Kirby enthusiasm is Seinfeld pitched at eleven, right? So 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 Seinfeld was pitched at ten, and then they just cranked it up just a little bit, and that's that's Kirby enthusiasm. So uh, so she and so so we just, we, she we've been loving it, and and I looked down and I was like, Trump as like, like Trump. And it wasn't, and they didn't say it was an assassination uh, assassination attempt. But at first, they were like potential, like Trump might have been shot, like his he's bleeding from his ear, you know. And so, and I'm like, there's there's no way, could this just knowing the kind of security that normally surrounds these people, I'm like, there's no way this has happened. So I, of course, I check it out, and, and there's like a little blurb: Trump is bleeding from the ear. It looks like there's shots been fired. <laughs> and it, it all came crashing down when you saw like. No, but look at this photo, yo. No, no I, saw, I saw they 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 posted video. They posted video really quickly, you know, and it sounded like. And so you see Trump, and he, and he, and you and the very the very first video was just the, the shots being fired, and he, and, and he and he does this to the ow, and then and then he and he drops down, and then that's all the video we got. And I'm like, there's no way that that's actually a legitimate thing. Like that's got to be a B or something because because I didn't hear any screaming. I'm like, there's no way. Like like there's got to be there's no way that people are just that sanguine. Like there's shots fired, but apparently it turns but, out that I just didn't get all the information. <laughs> but like, but but also like like uh, uh, from what I've read, people yes are that sanguine when they get shot. Yeah. Like they don't even realize it. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, like uh, unfortunately, in like uh, uh, cop citizen incidents, you see somebody gets shot and they just look down and they're like, you shot me, you know, uh, like that, that's, that's how traumatic and strange that is. Um, uh, there, I, I'm not going to lie. I do loves me a, a good conspiracy theory, but, uh, but I remember <laughs> I was just trying to think of the logistics th uh, that would possibly make this a false flag operation. Yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, a breeze. 
like a breeze away from an eye socket. Yeah, is, there's no, there's no way, there's no way that that anybody, there's no way that Trump was like, yeah, let's get so even no matter how, what how amazing a sharpshooter, no matter <laughs> like like yeah, let's have him four or five hundred away. He'll shoot at me. He, maybe he hits me. Maybe he doesn't. But let's just have it go close. Like there's just no fucking way. So I know that there's well, no and 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 then we we must acknowledge the tragic part where it's just like a a a, 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 a dad yeah. uh, died. Protecting Protecting his family, yeah. other people critical injury. This is serious stuff, uh, but but we're talking about the subject of subjective experience of WTF, mate. Uh, it, it was incredible. Yeah, and it, but and, and it's it really was for me. It was crazy just digesting it all because again, like I was like, there's no way this is this no way this actually happened. And then as I'm getting more information, I'm like, okay, maybe it did happen. Maybe this is legit, you know. And then and it took because it took a while. It took maybe a, a, an hour and a half for me to start getting reports on my news services that that like some that there were people had actually that one person like the firefighter had been killed. That a couple other people had actually been injured. So for a long time, it was just like, I'm like this is this is just silly. And then. And of course, people started like we're breaking news. The president, the former president, has been shot at. Like, but it, so it, for me, it, it felt like I was like, there's no way this could pot. Like in this day and age, like really, can't we cover all possible? Like, like I mean, maybe a thousand yards might be difficult, but like, you know. Well, it, it, it uh, again, keep in mind they are not protecting the actual president. The Secret Service is protecting a presidential candidate yes. and a former president, and there are, I assume there are different resource allocations for all of that stuff. And um, uh, on top of that, it sounds like in the noise, you know, you get some weirdo claiming that he saw it, and then and they were like, "There's no way this is." This weirdo actually saw it, but then it's like, nope. Here's the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, actually yeah, was like, like, guys, guys. He yeah, appears they, no, to they, me. They, they, that's exactly right. They'd be like, like, there's somebody up there, guy. Like, that's so crazy. Like, so that, yeah, that's that's crazy for me. That has to be really hard to be a a, a law enforcement professional in a day and age where everybody has the ca uh, capacity to capture everything in real time from multiple different angles. You, I like that's like you're just you're just gonna you're always gonna come out looking t terrible. Like unless unless you're like literally like you take the bullet and then you're like oh that was great. We got well and and to uh, to to the Secret Service's credit, uh, they they did the uh, I, I saw the movie Three Hundred. They all turtled up around yeah, yeah, him yeah. and they got annoyed <laughs> when he wanted to pick up his shoes yeah. and and. Uh, I, I, I I can't decide if I respect him more or less for recognizing the photo op opportunity because depending on what feed you listen to, it's either very loud or very quiet where you hear him go, wait, wait, yeah, and he collects yeah. himself and then he jumps up with that pose. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and 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 no matter how, no matter no matter where you fall on the political divide. Um, the fact that he had the presence of mind, right? So here's he's like, oh shit. I, 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 my ear is now bleeding. I, everybody believes there are gunshots. I don't even, I, maybe I'm a little bit, a little bit shocked because of the adrenaline pumping and stuff is like that. But for him to have the presence of mind, like, no, hold on, guys. We need to get, this is a great opportunity for me to, like, show my base that I will not be defiled. Like, that's, that's pretty miraculous. Like, that's, well, and, and like, you have to, like, uh, I'm not a huge fan of him, but I do have to get, that's a tip of the hat for me. My TV, a very progressive guy, been like, that was good. Like that's pretty crazy to have that presence of mind. Uh, well, and keep in mind, there's it's probably no accident that he's in the WWE Hall of Fame, <laughs> and, and, and I believe took a body slam from uh, Vince McMahon or something yeah. like that. I mean, that is that is a that is a showman who understands uh, the right moment for the right thing. Uh, let me see if I can find. Uh, there was on top. Of, so this is the part where, at, at the time, Heaton and I were like. Uh, 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 I started messing with Heaton because he would check the news and I, and I would pretend to check the news and I would be like, this just in, he's already sworn in. And then <laughs> Heaton, Heaton was so wrapped in the moment, he was like, really? Well, how does constitutionally that... That's impossible. But, so get this. So, uh, 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 by the way, historically, uh, people have made parallels <laughs> to the fact that... Um, uh, Teddy Roosevelt once got shot in the middle of a speech and finished his speech yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, worthy of note, 
Teddy Roosevelt lost <laughs> after <laughs> afterward. <laughs> um, but the uh, uh, the magician Rudy Kobe, and maybe somebody can find the tweet. He retweeted something um, from uh, 538. 538, uh, Nate Silver's uh, yeah. uh, thing. Yeah. Where uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I know this is a statistical artifact, and I know that that everything has been weighted according to their things. But the way 538 does it is they they take an aggregate of all the polls and they they put their own special sauce on there, and then they yeah. run Monte Carlo simulations of what's going to happen. But no matter what the odds are, sooner or later, somebody keeps rolling just, just straight blackjacks all the way till they own the casino, which is amazing because uh, Rudy Kobe tweeted out this 538 latest estimate. They ran a simulation. Who's favored to win the 2024 presidential election? 538 uses polling economic and demographic data to explore likely election uh, outcomes. It says Biden wins 53 times out of 100 in our simulation. Trump wins 47 times out of 100. Uh, and then there's a less than 100, one in 100 chance of them uh, of it being a stalemate. So uh, what what I love about this is like you go back. I'm like that cannot be right in any way. And so I went to the 538 article. And sure enough, it's, it's true. It says that Biden wins 53 times out of 100 in the simulation that they ran. Uh, it comes out with Biden winning 534 times, Trump winning 462 times. But then you scroll down, and every single poll shows Biden with a, a, a disadvantage to Trump. But it was just a case where they, when, they, when they ran the random number generator, all the random numbers came up for Biden instead of Trump. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and, and that's and that's why, you know, it, it's funny. I, I think that like right now, polling seems to be polling and and RG, uh, uh, RNG and all that stuff seems to be because I think it's because we are such a closely divided nation. It's always a little bit of a crapshoot, and then and and then really and really tr and and I think it actually behooves people if they fail their projections, right? Then, then they've got a two-week cycle just explaining why they're like. If they get it right, people are like, "Oh, you got it right. That's great." And then th that's the story. You got it right, you know. But if they didn't get it right, you've got weeks of explaining. Oh, these are the things that we didn't see. That well, like to me, it's it always it, it from a news from a news perspective. To me, it feels like it makes more sense to come close. But not not grab that brass ring and then explain why because you get way more leverage you get way more mileage out of, well, out of not not getting there you know this is one of the meta discussions that I saw was the difference between how everything appears when you see the video of the assassination attempt and when you look at individual photos uh, because obviously. Uh, you know, we live in an age where there's eight billion cameras on everything all the time. In fact, there's one photo that appears to have caught the bullet yeah, mid streaking yeah. past him. <laughs> so uh, crazy. It's it's bonkers, right? Uh, but uh, uh, this is a case where uh, uh, the, yes, everybody gave boots on the ground noise, like Twitter is good at. But in general, it looks an awful lot like the mainstream media did the you know, complete interviews on everything and put together a, a very sensible story. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, it is, it's funny. I mean, and they are, they are at least, at least again, because I, I follow uh, the papers that I get are all kind of like the, just the big, like I get the, just the National Review and then and then the Washington Post, New York Times, L.A. Times, uh, and then and then Reuters. So so those are the five that kind of get pushed to my phone. Whoa, whoa, you, you, you don't get the Wall Street Journal? No, well, because they because they're a little bit more expensive, and I I just can't you know. Oh. They, they, I, so what I what I did with the New York Times and the Washington Post is I, I I signed up for a year, and then and then they're like, oh, it's gonna be forty dollars a month, and I was like, or not forty, or it's gonna be four dollars a year, and I'm like, I, I can't afford this anymore. And the moment I backed out, they're like, oh, we'll give it to you, we'll give it to you for a dollar a month, you know. And I was like, okay, that's great. So uh, and I and the Washington uh, the Wall Street Journal did not do that when I I, I was with them for uh, like in in 2000, 2020, yeah no 20, I, 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 I didn't do that so I, I think you and I have talked about this where it's like uh, the, the informational diet is a real thing it's yeah. like it's like uh, if if uh, in fact I 
knowing that I'm just going to get fed more of whatever I click on on Google News, like I, I click one article about Jerry Seinfeld, and that's all my feed is <laughs> yeah, that, that, forever. That's exactly. And in fact, it's it, it, in fact that's really disturbing to me most recently because I will like so it, Isabella and I will be watching a movie and I'll talk we'll talk about like oh like oh this actress is a pretty interesting person let me let me search her and then I will find and then I will find in my news feed and in my Facebook feed and in my and everything I'm like I'm suddenly getting and uh, I'm suddenly getting all of these things connected to that actress they're connect there are people that look like that actress there are people I'm like I'm like this what this is Oh, I, just, the, like, the, the, the worst are the bottom feeders, and I don't even want to say the name of which websites, but there are certain science fiction-based websites that will know that at some point you clicked on an article about Star Wars, and then they got nothing but these clickbait headlines like, this role almost happened for a person from show you know. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, what is it? Is it and, and, then, and you know every time you do it, you're just reinforcing <laughs> the stupidity. This is how you get bubbled. This is how you get trapped in, in, in yeah, and stupid every, land. And every, and, and every single time you go, oh, I really want to. In fact, I do that. I'll be like, oh, I really want to check this out. But I know if I do. That's right. I, I'm, I'm in this. I'm in this loop forever and always. So it's good. So yeah. So I. So what I. What I will do is occasionally I will turn my thing on into either into incognito or I'll turn on the VPN and then I'll go check it out. Like, oh, Which okay, by, yeah. the, by the way, uh, <laughs> when I was younger, there was only one purpose for incognito mode. But now that I'm older, yeah. it is. <laughs> I. I knew I got old when I started typing A N A L and it auto completed analytics at YouTube.com. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're all we're all trapped in a bubble, and you're trapped right here with us. Um, how how uh, where were so so uh, where were you? Were you there in the moment when you when you found so out yeah, about it? So yeah, no, yeah. So so we were. I, I think we again. I think we were watching Seinfeld. Um, either we eating lunch or late breakfast or something. But um, uh, um, but yeah, and and uh, and then and so I saw that, and I was like, hold on, hold on. So we. Paused it and I and I read it and then yeah and then I then I just checked I checked my phone because it, that was that's the most direct conduit for information we didn't I, I don't have even though now Roku does have a live TV thing but their live TV stuff is not that great so um, so yeah so just my phone was my 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 basic my information vehicle and and I just we stu I stuck by it like and again it was really funny to see I I for me it just seems so strange I'm like there's no way. That that we're not going to hear about other people getting injured, if like, but we didn't like. For, there was a good hour or so before they told us like, oh, someone else like other people were shot. There's somebody that 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 died on the scene. Like, yeah, like, we they, they, well, there were only eight shots total, and and also. Um, Oh, welcome to Gun Talk with two people who don't <laughs> have the guns. Uh, uh, the AR-15 is is not the best uh, long distance sniper rifle. Yeah. Uh, it just happened to be what uh, yeah. allegedly uh, uh, this this uh, uh, twenty year old man uh, could get his hands on, um, uh, and uh, uh, basically there are three like intentional shots, and then like my guess is either he felt a bullet whiz past his head, and then just said screw it and just started r wrapping them off or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know th that's a, it, th that's the heartbreaking thing for me. Because you know he was a kid, you know, like twenty years old, right? Well, so and, and, and and it's uh, not yet a woman, no longer a girl. <laughs> like I mean, not old enough to drink, old enough to die in a war yeah. by conscription, yeah. you yeah. know. But you know, but but at the same time, like you also know that not old enough to really know, like to be able to really easily. Think Think out the consequences of your actions. You know, you're like, 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 like. I mean, I know, I know that that I constantly found myself making decisions that had long term uh, implications for my life without, with, uh, uh, like, repeatedly. And I, like, it just, it took me until I was probably in my mid 30s before I was like, oh wait, I want to do this, but maybe I should just stop for a moment and consider. You know. And so the thing is, is like so. Uh, you know, so like this this is a good time to uh, either choose the leader of the the, the free world, or maybe uh, pledge your life for two years to go to war. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, or, or you know, or 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 you know, or like like the. 
because he was not very vocal online, we don't know his motivation. But the thing is, is that no matter what his motivation was, I just can't see that like m- murdering a presidential candidate is going to get you where you want. Unless, unless of course, maybe he was diddled by Donald Trump as a young man. Okay, all right. Like, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. this is this is. Yeah. I, yeah. I was about to say the one thing we must not do here is yeah. say something that we'll regret later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no, we're no, past yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That's no. So anyway, but all I'm saying is like there, 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 it's a it's. Unless, unless there's a very personal reason, like if it's a political, if he's if he's making a political action, like like it's not going to get you what you want. And the idea that being 20 years old doesn't give you enough foresight to well, realize, uh, uh, oh yeah, I, I, I'm, what I want is not going to happen, no matter what I, I do. I, I don't know. I I I, I, I don't want to speak for anybody in this situation because we're we're just yeah, dumb by spend. I was trying to watch Fargo season five with yeah, Andrew which is Heaton. a travesty. Like which is which is really truthfully like he he basically fired those bullets to wreck <laughs> no, your life. All right, all right, <laughs> too too soon, too soon, too soon. <laughs> uh, but the uh, 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 my guess is a lot of a lot of stuff is going to unfold very slowly. But uh, but that was bonkers. Uh, but the one thing that it made me think of is uh, uh, you got to go back um, uh, why, uh, uh, the big question that I've heard a lot of people asking is is this kind of political violence on the upswing or the downswing and uh, you and I are old enough to remember uh, listening to for example Eddie Murphy's first comedy album where he mentions how 81 was a crazy year they shot Reagan they shot the Pope they shot yep. John Lennon, yep. like yep. just yep. everybody, right? And and uh, uh, so just you know, people getting shot all the time. That was the thing that happened. And then uh, 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 yes, certainly the last few years have have been nutty. But uh, I, I I don't know. It's um, with it, it seems like there's a bit of a I don't like the reductionist ideal idea of of a simple pendulum going one way or the other. But it does seem like humans get to like to argue for a while and then at some point the fists come out and then they're like oh that's gross let's go back to arguing yeah uh so i don't know where we're at yeah i mean i mean that that i think that uh, there's always a testing of the, it, to me at least it feels like there's always a testing of those bounds like you people get you know the rhetoric gets all like, so hot and so fervent and so ardent that eventually people are like i got to do something about this and then things get done and people go and then people go oh this is not cool like like things just like you know and then they go oh, you know and yeah and it definitely seems i mean and it's crazy cuz that that actually happens i mean Again, it, from my perspective, it, it comes down to mo- motivations, right? The thing is, is that like that's why, like, like school shootings happen bec- often because you run across these these despondent kids that are that have been so marginalized. They're like, you know, like often they're like, yeah, I don't mind going down in history as being someone that took. Wait, back wait, 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 hold on. In the chat, Scooper Nova Girl is is reminding us that also we lost uh, oh, Richard yeah. Simmons, Doctor yeah. Ruth, Shannon Doherty, all three of those I knew. But I didn't know about Shelley Duvall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shelley Duvall. I, I actually Wait. worked. I actually worked with her when I was at Universal. Uh, uh, Mrs. Pigglewiggle. No, no, but, but that was no, no, not Mrs. Pigglewiggle. It was Shelley Shelley Duvall's bedtime stories. Uh, Jean, Stable, Jean Stapleton was Mrs. Pigglewiggle, and Shelley Duvall was was Mrs. Her, uh, her was, bedtime stories were were on Showtime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they, yeah, they were produced yeah. by us. They were yeah. produced by Universal like, Cartoon Studios and Family wow. Entertainment. Yeah. So, so. Uh, D- but but, but never, you, you you know where she lived, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just no, just down in Wimberley, like. Like, like twenty miles from us. Yeah, that, that's well. And she, had, but she also had a house. She also had a house uh, uh, in in L. A. Because I, I actually, it was a, it was a pretty. It was a pretty. Do, do you have a good Shelley Duvall story? Ah, uh, no. Nah. Not, yes, I can tell. I can tell. I don't want to tell right now. Not the week that she died. I don't want to. Yeah, like. But yes, I can tell. I do. Have, I do. Have, right, I, I, mean, I, I just want to. I just want to hear like your your Robert Evans, and we're like, I'm sitting there looking at a hairy beaver. I will leg to no, my left, yeah, a leg no, to no. my right. <laughs> She's still screaming about the shining. Yeah. No. No. Just. 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 Uh, just like, you know, it, it, by the time Shelley Duvall's bedtime stories came out, you know, she was a. A, a, a little bit of a diminished, like 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 the, there's a little bit of tarnish on her star, you know. Yeah. And so and so, but but to to meet her, you would never 
know that. You would never know. She, she was at oh, the height uh, of uh, her, uh, her in, in, in the chat, El, El Condor Paso 69 says, wait, what? In Embr in Wimberley? Yeah, uh, Shelley Duvall lived in Wimberley, Texas, just down the road from us. And also, I believe, uh, this is local gossip. I don't think it's online anywhere. But both Paul Simon and his former wife, uh, Edie Burkell, live down there. I mean, it's, it's a whole hippie commune down there. Yeah, that that's um, it's it's a Wimberley is a pretty crazy place because there's there's lots of acreage and there's so there's lot you like uh, that's my my ex her family lived down there and so we'd be driving down and there were lots of like you know we'd be driving down a road and there's these like sort of like gated community kind of entrances but it's not to a gated community it's just to one individual house you know and I'm like huh. That's, uh, that, that, that's all of them with like armed guards yeah, at the yeah, front. Yeah, that kind of like, huh, that's really interesting. This is a strange, strange little neighborhood. <laughs> uh, sorry, I cut off your your story uh, no, unless yeah, you so, don't want to tell it. So yeah, so I, I don't. I, I feel bad, but 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 so Shelly, so Shelly, to to meet her back then, you would never have known that she, that her that she behaved very much as if she was still the ascendant and like that she was still in the shining and still like you know like having uh, so. She very much was a, a she f she behaved like Sharon Stone, I guess probably Sharon Stone at, at, at peak Sharon Stone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so and so I was I was like, oh, this is <laughs> I'm like okay. So yeah, so and and she didn't take a shine to me, and so I was like, oh, this is uh, this is a weird thing. Normally people get along with me. Like normally I'm friendly and people are friendly back, but not with Shelly Duvall. And I was like, okay, well, I'll, just, I'll go get you your water. You're like, I'll go get uh, you your water. All I need is a little bit of virgin <laughs> blood and you just wait. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be attracted to me in no time. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay. Um, what else, what, what else has happened this week before we move into serious business? Um, what else? What, yeah. Uh, what other things have occurred? Um, well, I mean, uh, so there's there's some inter interesting international news, like um, you know, uh, obviously the whole Gaza Gaza oh. Israeli thing. Sorry, and hold on. Uh, uh, international news from Mike TV. Special report. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you want to wander into this territory? <laughs> yeah. No. 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 no, no. She didn't take a, she didn't take a shining to me. That's no, exactly she right didn't. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, uh, that's as good a moment as any. Oh, you know what? I uh, there is one very very important thing. Hold on, let me open up this email, and I'm I, I just need you to kind of kind of scat for me for just a little bit while I I dig this up because I'm going to give you guys a whole bunch of uh, uh, true facts and and places to go. Um, that's the opposite of scatting for me. That's silencing for oh, me. Oh, oh, you want me to scat for you? There okay, you okay. go. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so yeah. Um, oh, zip it up, up, boop. Like you want me to actually scat? Zip it up. No, I, I just meant keep ding, keep ding, the conversation ding, alive ding, during ding, this ding, moment. Ding, but I'm but I'm here ding, for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can I can I can zip it up, doop, a dang, dang, dong. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got links. I got links for you guys. Um, here, let me place these in a, an appropriate place that doesn't show anything. Uh, guess what came out this week? A new episode of World's Greatest Con. Ba -doop -boop. Hey. Uh, yeah, so uh, I asked Will Saddleberg for uh, what the official link should be. Now, of course, the most official would be to go to patreon.com slash greatest con, I believe, uh, or, or world's greatest con. Um, the, uh, but you can listen to it straight from ACAST. Uh, if uh, just search for world's greatest con episodes, uh, greatest magic show of all time was a lie. Spotify, uh, you could go to Spotify, type in, oh, geez, I'm not going to read that on the air. I'm just going to copy <laughs> and paste all this into the chat. There we go. Uh, let's play all of these in silent in the background so that Justin just freaks out and wonders why this episode is so popular. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, 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 man, it, it's, uh, uh, we're getting, we're getting down to, it's one thing to have made a couple of pretty good seasons of world's greatest con, but it's another thing to on purpose design a system that allows us to keep on making them in a timely manner, 
uh, and uh, I, I think we're on it. I think is that is that so? You've got like teams of writers. You've got like a news desk. You've got researchers. You've got. Uh, I've been carefully instructed to not say exactly what the special sauce is. Yeah, but sure. There's some but special sauce. Awesome. And now is a good time for everybody to open up their podcatcher of choice and just search search for World's Greatest Con. Uh, this one is a one-off episode. It's not the beginning oh. of an arc or anything. But as a one-off episode, it's extraordinarily good because it takes a story that every magician knows and breaks down why it is so beloved while also questioning whether or not it was ever true, question mark. And, 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 and is that question answered in the, uh, in the episode? Uh, well, there's only one way to find All out, right. my well, friend, and right. that's to head on over to patreon.com slash great night. That's where you keep this show loud, live, and independent. I got it. Uh, you get bonus episode, The Bones. If you enjoy the relaxed energy of two bros sitting outside complaining about how hot it is, then head on over to patreon.com slash great night. We're, we're only growing the amount of content in the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you, you use Patreon, right? I do. Yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, gonna... so, so have you found yourself, I found myself wanting to just put more and more bonus stuff on the other side of the paywall. So yeah, so in fact, in fact, that that's actually something that took me a long time to reconcile. For a long time, my Patreon, I gave everything away for free, um, and then and then I and then eventually I realized I was like, wait, so I've had people, I've had people that have been supporting me all these years that are getting the same thing I give to everybody else, and I was like, that's I'm, I feel like a bit of a jerk. So yeah, no, they're a bunch of freeloaders. Yeah, yeah, we, they're yeah, freeloaders. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I so I've begun. So yeah, so my in fact the podcast that I did hesitation cuts I now do, but I do it only for my for my Patreon folks. That's the, they're the only like it's a, it's a shorter format, but even so, it still happens with, with original songs and and the whole story thing. They they get they the only the people that pay for my Patreon get that. But I also have stuff for the members. So if you you sign up for free, you can still you still get your own subset of cool stuff so and, 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 and uh, it, what, what what's your patreon uh it's it's uh force it gets gets at go so yeah forward slash gets at go patreon.com forward slash gets at yeah go, so and uh, that by the way that's spelled g-r-e-a-t-n-i-g-h-t is where you want to go patreon.com slash gets at go spelled in g-r-e-a-t n-i-g-h-t that's exactly it's that's crazy yeah it is it's a it's a french it's a french pronunciation it's it's a uh yeah it's it's sort of it's a catalan slash french thing yeah it's like you know little spanish french thing that yeah oh hell i just realized we only, we have one slot out of the four horse boys of the apocalypse um uh, we only have two tiers. I don't know if you, you remember when we set this up. It's yeah. like you know, we got the basic tier, but then there's uh, kind of like uh, Supreme Court justices. We want people to serve just – just you don't have to do it forever, but just for one amount of time, you could be one of the four horse boys of the apocalypse. And, and later when we meet in real life, we'll know that you're one of the real ones. Yeah. No. So, and d is there? Are there? Uh, do you guys brand them, or is there some way that you you emblazon in a permanent way that they've been a yes, horse boy? We do. Uh, yeah. What we do is we visit them in their dreams, oh. and then we cause a nocturnal emission. Oh. And the nice oh. thing is that it's so, so embarrassing. It's so it's, <laughs> it's so embarrassing that they've soiled their sheets. <laughs> That they never bring it up in public ah. because nobody wants to go around saying two middle-aged men came to me in the middle of the night and they caused me to soil my sheet. I'm a horse boy. <laughs> but if you say that to me at an event, then yeah, 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 yeah. we yeah, know. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, that's good to uh, know. Hey, uh, Nate put together a game for us. Uh, uh, hey, Nate, are you there? Hello, great night. Oh, I'm back. There we go. Uh, we got Nate. Uh, last week we played a quotes game. Uh, I think uh, was I still sick last week? I think you were just like the tail end of being sick, so you were still a bit groggy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, this time I'm ready to to win. Uh, what are we playing this time? Oh boy! Tonight I brought a challenge. Tonight's game is that's not the scene. You will be presented with a film summary, a scene description, as well as dialogue from five of the most iconic films over the past sixty years. Except uh, everything isn't as it seems. There are three things that are off, each in one category. One part from the summary, one part from the description, and one part from the dialogue have been altered. It is your mm. job to find it. So this is this is essentially you're going to tell us like 75, 80 percent the truth. Yep. But we won't know where 
the parody errors are in there. Correct. For and, everyone. and and based on it, we're gonna have to correct. And and is it us? I think I think it should be us versus you, right? Yeah. Is this is this a competitive thing? Or so, is this... uh, to my knowledge, this is Brian v Mike TV, okay. and. Here's the thing. I don't have hints this time. Chat, this is a very hard puzzle. This was play tested with um, one of the members of the Diamond Club community. So I'm going to rely on y'all to help out. Brian, Mike, y'all have two lifelines. You can call anyone you want to help. Okay. That's all you get. Okay. For okay. Everyone. All right. All right. Uh, oh, okay. man. I, I just realized uh, next time you have a moment on the stream deck, uh, uh, you have to add the heartbeat MP3. That, that, that was one of my old, old favorites here. I got gotcha. you. All right. Go. Here's how points work. For everything that you can find that is incorrect, that is a point. However, you can get another point if you tell me what is the correct thing from this uh, bit of information. Uh, so, so as so many as four points per. Six points. So, six. so there's because because there's there's three different uh, there's three different uh, qualifications. There's there's the there's the summary. There's a synopsis, the summary, and then what. Dialogue and the, and the, oh, and the actual dialogue. Okay, great. And so if I, if I can if we can say yes, that was that dialogue was actually part of the scene, or or do we have to complete it? Do we have to do anything? Beyond? No, no, no. All all of them are flawed in some way. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Find the flaw, correct it. If you can get it, if we can correct it, then we get another point. Okay, all right, yep. great, cool. Oh, there it is. All right, oh. let's okay. begin. All right, uh, chat. You may give hints. You may be oblique. You are here to help if you'd like. Okay, who, uh, you want to go first or second, Mike? Um, uh, I will. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I want to go second. I want to. I want to. Okay, just all right. I'm ready. Aside. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. We are going to start from the most recent films and work our way back. Okay. An Edgar Wright's 2004 film, Shaun of the Dead, a zombie, a zombie apocalypse breaks out in London as Shaun, the insurance salesman, and Ed, his lazy roommate, try to survive and get to the Winchester pub. In this scene, Shaun, Ed, and Pete are planning the steps they need to take in order to get to the pub. The dialogue is as follows. Take car, go to Mums, shoot Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. There are three flaws here. Can you find them? Okay. Uh, it's not Pete. Ed is right. Uh, keep, keep go again. S say sure it thing. again, and and I'll call him as I as I am. I have my eyes closed for right now. Sure thing. In Edgar Wright's 2004 film, Shaun of the Dead. Okay, all right, all right. Like, would you possibly attribute it to the wrong year? No. Okay, good, because 2004, I believe, was the right year, because I remember watching it in the airport. Um, uh, that was the year we went to the Redwoods. All right. Also the same year that Psychonauts came out from Double Fine. Go ahead. A zombie apocalypse breaks out in London as Sean, the insurance salesman. Uh, hold on. Was it London? I don't think it was London. Is that your answer? That's my first answer. Is there only one okay. mistake? Will I have a chance to to respond? Will I have a chance to come in and, and no, and no, adjust? this is my turn. Oh, no, no, I no, mean, no, no, no. When when this is done, when you're done, will I have a chance to go in and interject and steal? stuff? Uh, yes, y'all can both collect the same points too. It is okay. a matter of who can get okay. the most. There are six okay. points total okay. up for grabs. Okay, the, I'm gonna say it wasn't it wasn't London. It wasn't okay. London. That is your vote for the um, do 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 do. The film summary. Cool. Uh, going on from here, Sean, the insurance salesman, and Ed, his lazy roommate. No, he is not an insurance salesman. He is an AV tech guy. Is that your answer? Yes. Okay, noted. All right, next up, uh, do and Ed, his lazy roommate, try to survive and get to the Winchester pub. In this scene, Sean, Ed, and Pete are planning the steps they need to take in order to get to the pub. The dialogue is as follows. Take car, go to Mums, shoot Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. I will tell you this, you have one out of the three correct. Okay, uh, is the error in the quote, or... There in... is an error in the quote, an error in the scene uh, summary, and an error in the film summary. He doesn't say, shoot, what's his name? Phil? Yeah. Okay. And uh, how many points are each? This is real compl complicated. It's a little complicated. There are three easy points to grab. There are extra if you can correct me. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So I tried to correct you on two of them. So uh, 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 I don't know what the right part is on the third one. Okay. All right. 
Brian, for this round, you have collected two points. You are correct. It is not shoot, Phil. Okay, good. That's one. And Sean is not an insurance salesman. What is he though? He he's an assistant manager at like a at like a appliance store. Uh, Mike, for actually getting that and correcting me, you get two points. Oh, dang it! Huh. Uh, boo! I, 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 I guess I'll, I'll. There we go. You get the window sound. <laughs> the, the third co-host. All right. Okay. All right. This yeah, this I've, one's yours. I've, I like this. I like I've this watched, game. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've watched that. Sh I've watched that movie like once a year since it came out. <laughs> and, uh, I've sometimes... only seen it once, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that makes yeah, me yeah. smarter. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, certainly right. does. Certainly does. So, do you think you can guess if anything else is incorrect in this quote here, or oh. are you done? Yeah. Oh, oh, me? Or no. Yeah, I think we're I, done. I think we're done. We 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 shot I, our shot. I, I I think I I can come up with more things okay. that are incorrect. I'll read off. Um, yeah, read read it again real quick. In Edgar Wright's 2004 film Shaun of the Dead, a zombie apocalypse breaks out in London as Shaun, the insurance salesman, and Ed, his lazy roommate, try to survive and get to the Winchester pub. In this scene, Shaun, Ed, and Pete are planning the yeah, steps. Yeah, Pete's not in the. Is Pete's not in the scene? So it's, it's just it's just Ed and it's just Ed and Shaun talking. That is another point. And then and then what's the uh, what's what's the what's the continuation? Uh, need to, in order to get to the pub, the dialogue is as follow: Take car, go to Mum's. Shoot Phil. Sorry, grab Liz. Go to the Winchester. No, it's take Pete's car. It's take Pete's car. It's it's not take a car. It's take Pete's car because they don't have a car. Close, but no. Oh. So mm. this dialogue is repeated twice in that scene. The first time is when they just come back to the house, and then Sean recognizes and says, "No, we should go to the pub." After Ed insists he needs to be in a place that he knows all the exits. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I thought I thought they were like we have to take take because they were okay, yeah, yeah, yeah anyway. whatever he got it yeah, wrong he yeah, got it yeah, wrong yeah, yeah, he got it wrong, yeah, I got it wrong. Yeah. all right for Sean of the Dead here were the answers and things that were wrong first Sean is an electronics salesman an appliance I, yes you got that you have points okay all right fine all right, I counted all right next uh, Pete was not in the scene as was found and lastly. The line is "kill Phil, not shoot Phil." Oh, oh! This is how uh, how close we're playing it. All right, yeah. all right, <laughs> all right, all right. I'm in. Next up, uh, to make this a little easier on everyone, first round is just find the errors. Next round is to correct if you'd like to. All okay. Right. okay. Okay. All right. Cool. cool. Awesome. In Quentin Tarantino's 1994 film *Pulp Fiction*, a series of non-linear vignettes tell six interconnected stories of crime, violence, and love in Los Angeles. In this scene, Jules and Vincent are at Jimmy's house after Jules accidentally shoots Marvin in the back of the car. The wolf is called and arrives to clean up the mess. The dialogue is as follows. The wolf. Your wife, Minnie, comes home at 9.30 in the a.m. Is that right? Jimmy. Uh-huh. The wolf. I was led to believe that if she comes home and finds us here, she wouldn't appreciate it none too much. Jimmy. She wouldn't at that. The wolf. Just give us... Or sorry. That gives us... 40 minutes to get the fuck out of Dodge. Okay. Uh, first of all, I am so happy that of all the days Justin <laughs> couldn't be here for this new game, the the movie that he goes to sleep to listening and rewatching every single night <laughs> is the subject. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, I, I already have a few. Do you want to go first? I guess it's your turn to go first. Yeah. Okay. So, so go ahead. Uh, so, um, uh, start with the first, the first section. Sure thing. In the film description. So I don't, I don't think there are actually six stories. There's uh, there's the 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 boxer story. That's the um, there's the boxer story. There's true. There's the the hitman story. There's the um, the story of the 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 Bonnie and Clyde couple. That's three. There's the well. I, I guess I guess it depends on how many how many how what you look at each individual story because there's the. All right, well, go, go ahead. So the six, so six stories intertwined. Sure thing. In the description, in Quentin Tarantino's 1994 film *Pulp Fiction*, a series of non-linear vignettes tells the story, six interconnected stories of crime, violence, and love in Los Angeles. That is your film description. What's wrong here? Um, uh, there's no love. I mean, there, there is the love between the, the Bonnie and Clyde couple, between uh, um, but I don't think there's love anywhere else. Um, is that yeah, your I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to say that, that, that it's, it, there's, it's, it's, 
they're interconnected. Can, can, can I go on this part as you well? You may jump in. Okay, uh, it's not six. Um, it is, there are three chapters, but four if you want to include the Bonnie and Clyde couple in there. For the film description, Brian, you are correct, netting you a point. It is four. Oh, okay, wait. Cool. So, so wait, but but I identified the so that's you, two points. Yep, that is two points. Okay, it good. Counted. Okay, good. Good. All right. All right. Hey, all right. Next up. Next up. Scene description. In this scene, Jules and Vincent are at Jimmy's after Jules accidentally shoots Marvin in the back of the car. The wolf is called and arrives to clean up the mess. What's wrong here? Okay, one more time. Uh, so. In this scene, Jules and Vincent are at Jimmy's house after Jules accidentally shoots Marvin in the okay. back of their car. So, Ju- uh, okay, so Jules doesn't shoot Marvin. Um, it is, I believe, it's actually. Wait, wait, wait. No, nope, um, no, nope, no peeking. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not peeking. I'm, I'm just thinking because uh, I'm because I'm 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 confusing. Jules is the. Mm. <laughs> You're, you're pumping us for information. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to remember the Vincent. Vincent is, yeah. So Vincent's the guy that shoots. Vincent shoots. I, yeah, I, don't, I think Jules, Jules shoots him. I think Vincent shoots him. But uh, is that your answer? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Brian, what's your answer? Ah, he got it exactly right. Uh, Jules is the one who's angry with Vincent because Vincent is turning around and recklessly holds the gun facing towards Marvin. They yeah. hit a bump. Marvin's brains explodes. Later on, Jules expresses his disconsent content when Vincent says, I am, I'm just saying I'm a race car in the red. And Jules says, I'm a mushroom cloud lamb motherfucker, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, Mike, that nets you two points. Awesome. All right. Now for the dialogue. The dialogue is as follows. The wolf, your wife, Mindy comes home at 930 in the a.m. Is that right? Jimmy, uh-huh. The wolf, I was led to believe that if she comes home and finds us here, she wouldn't appreciate it too much. Jimmy, she wouldn't at that. The wolf, that gives us 40 minutes to get the fuck out of Dodge. So it's not Min- I don't think Minnie is her name, but I don't remember her actual name. But I, I haven't seen this movie in years. But I, don't, I don't think Minnie is actually her name. But, uh, yeah, that's the only, that's the only one I've got. Can I, I go? Right. That is the first point stolen. Brian, can you say the actual name? Uh, well, I'll tell you the motherfucking chapter of this is called The Bonnie Situation. Oh, and Bonnie. there you go, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and there may have been multiple references at various times during my marriage where I had to talk about <laughs> The Bonnie Situation. <laughs> All right, that's, that's, that is correct. We are a little bit towards the halfway round, and uh, chat to give you an idea of score. We are actually now six and six between Mike and Brian, and as always, there is a prize. <laughs> All, right, All right, ready. All right, I may butcher this name. Apologies now. In John McTiernan's 1988 Christmas film Die Hard, a Chicago police officer finds himself wrapped up in a fictional conspiracy as hostage in the Nakatomi Plaza. In this scene, it is Bill Clay holding John McClane's wife hostage and taunts his cowboy efforts to save everyone. The dialogue is as follows. Clay, this time John Wayne doesn't get to, doesn't walk into the sunset with Nancy Olson. McLean, that was Gary Cooper, asshole. All right, let's start with film description. Uh, I guess guess I go first this time. All right. In John McTiernan's 1988 Christmas film Die Hard, a Chicago police officer finds himself wrapped up in a financial conspiracy as a hostage in Nakatomi Plaza. What's wrong here? Well, uh, uh, I don't know if you would call a robbery a financial conspiracy or not. Uh, I would think that it looks to be, if, if, if this is a movie where it portrays a, uh, a hostage situation, but it turns out to be a simple smash and grab. So if you want to call that a financial conspiracy, you can, but I wouldn't want to call it that. Um, as for... I don't know for sure who the director was. I, 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 I'll I take it that it was John McTiernan's. I, I don't know. Uh, that's that's what I'm going to go with. Okay. Uh, Brian, you did not nab the point. Mike, can you steal it? Fuck you. Um, so uh, I, I do. I Well, I do. So and the actual, read, the, read the film description. Um, sure thing. Yep. In John McTiernan's 1988 Christmas film, Die Hard, a Chicago police officer finds himself wrapped up in a financial conspiracy as a hostage in Nakatomi Plaza. Okay, so I, I know that that's not the correct director, but I don't. I, I, I want to say like Richard Donner, but it's not Richard Donner. Maybe it is Richard Donner, but um, but um, but yeah, but I, it's not the right director. 
Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's that, uh, and then, and then, yes, and, and it's actually, it is if, actually, if he gets it wrong, can I try again? Uh, you may, because he did get it wrong. Okay. Let me hear it one more time. Right. In John McTiernan's 1988 Christmas film, Die Hard, a Chicago police officer finds himself wrapped up in a financial conspiracy as a hostage in Nakatomi Plaza. Mm. Okay. So he's never a hostage. Well, except for, except for. Yeah, no, he, you're right. He he comes in, he show he shows up. They're all hostages, and he shows up and saves them. So yeah, but I'm trying yeah. to remember if there's ever one scene where he is pretending to be a hostage. No, no. yeah, no, yeah, no. He's he's just a bad. The the, 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 the the scene I'm thinking of yeah. is the one at the very end where he's coming out limping uh, and 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 giving himself up. Uh, so I don't think he is ever a hostage. No, he he definitely has held a gunpoint a few times, but does that make you a hostage? Or 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 is or is the Chicago the misdirect? Wait, because the second movie is in New York. Yeah, I think I think it, I think it is. I think it's. I think I think it's New York, not Chicago. Brian, that is correct, as you've identified the incorrect information and corrected me. Yes, it is New York. Oh. <laughs> all right all right now for the scene description in this scene it is bill clay holding john mcclain's wife hostage and taunts his cowboy efforts to save everyone okay so this one i know so okay then go take it take okay, it okay so yeah it's, it's not bill clay it's, it's hans gruber is his name correct although that is two points. he does portray he pretends to be william clay but yeah. that's fine. But I'll yeah, give it to the, you. Yeah, Hans Gruber is the, uh, is the actual. Also, uh, did you know that was the first starring role that uh, that, that and, Professor uh, Snape Alan Rickman? got? Yeah. Alan, yeah, I know. Yeah, he I was, know. He he was, was 40, 46 years old. Yeah, he makes so me crazy. believe in being old. So crazy. All right. That is two points to Mike. All right. Now for the dialogue section of the scene. <sighs> Hans Gruber, in fact. This time, John Wayne does not walk into the sunset with Nancy Olsen. McLean, that was Gary Cooper, asshole. Remember, you do have lifelines, and chat can help you. Oh, I, no, I mean, chat's too easy because they they could Google. Uh, All right, and I don't, I don't call Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get two of these. All right. Bonnie, you're live on the air. This is important. I only get two lifelines, and I'm using one of them. You, oh dear. you watch Die Hard every single Christmas as you wrap presents. <laughs> We're playing yeah. a game where there's an error in the description, the synopsis, uh, or the setup for the scene, and there's an error in the dialogue. We've gotten okay. for, through the first two, and I'm going to have Nathan read aloud the dialogue, and I need you to both identify <clears throat> what's wrong and what, uh, and what the right part of it is, okay? Oh man. Okay, so so, so this, this is okay. uh, Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber is at the he's yeah. he's got a gun pointed at McLean and he says yeah. he says and you better do a good Hans Gruber accent. Go ahead, Nate. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I Oh. Uh, nope. J Hans Gruber. This time John Wayne does not walk into the sunset with Nancy Olsen. McLean. That was Gary Cooper, asshole. This time John Wayne does not walk off into the sunset with Nancy Olsen. That was Gary Cooper, asshole. I have aphasia. <laughs> oh my God. I'm having a hard time hearing you guys. Do it again. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. McLean. This time, John Wayne does not walk off into the sunset. With, oh, is it? What? With Nancy Olsen. With Nancy Olsen. And he says it was Gary Cooper. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What, but what? you got it. Wait. You named it. You, you just. Yeah, because that was John Wayne. Well, no, no. Uh, 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 so, so oh, he swapped. It was the guy from It's a Wonderful Life. I think he he missed. Jim, Jim, wait, Jimmy Jim Stewart? Stewart? No. No, the... no, 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 no. Uh, he's. I, I think. I think the wrong word is walk. I think it's ride. I think he swapped walk for ride. I think. I think the uh. original line is ride, and I think it's walk. Uh but but also yeah yeah yes. that, that, all right that's what we're going for okay <laughs> all right walk is not correct no 
Oh, awesome. Hey, that's great. Mike. You got it. Yeah, oh, you got it. Right. right. That's great. No, that is that is not the answer I'm looking oh, for. Oh, Apologies. Fuck. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Uh, all right. What, uh, uh, Mike, you, do you have a guess? Mike, you have a chance to steal. You can yeah, also I, use your lifeline. I mean, I, I, I don't. I think Nancy Olson is actually the, the wrong name because I think that Nancy Olson is from Superman, right? Um, but what? I don't, no. I don't. You're thinking of Margot Kidder. No, 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 no. I think the character Nancy Olsen is actually from, like, Jimmy Olsen's sister, Nancy Olsen, I believe, if I'm, um, but, but I, I, I don't know who it is that, that. All right, so you're just saying the wrong part is Nancy Olsen. Yeah, I think, I think that that's, that, that's, the, All right. that's the Mike TV, I think. that is correct, and that's you a point. Hey. Okay. Can y'all try and figure out the correct actress? Uh, Grace Kelly. Yes. Brian, that is a point. Hey! hey awesome. Hey, nice. Hey, nice yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, body. <laughs> wow. So we're still tied. Y'all are tied okay. nine and nine. We so have two if, films left to go. If this is, if the, if the next movie is like uh, any Fellini movie, my wife might actually come in here. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> well, well, so so far, I, I think that, uh, that that Nate has deliberately been picking movies to taunt us yeah, and, yeah. and making them difficult. Uh, uh, yes, all right. yes, I have. All right. In Ridley Scott's 1979 mm. film Alien, Ripley oh. fights for her life on the spaceship Nostromo as an alien creature boards a stowaway after her crew went to investigate a distress call from an asteroid. In this scene, Ridley is trying to disengage the self-destruct sequence of the escape pod she is in. The dialogue is as follows: uh, Ripley, mother, turn off the or sorry, turn on the heating unit. Ugh. One more time, sorry, mother, turn on the heating unit. Mother, the ship will automatically destruct in T-minus five minutes. Ripley, you bitch. We'll start with the film description. Oh, this is a really good one. Uh, Mike, do you want to go first or second? Yeah, so this, yeah, th unfortunately, this is a movie I saw a bunch as a kid, but I haven't seen much since. Um, All right, Mike, you start us up. Uh, so so break, break it into th I think, three I segments. Think, I think it's the Nostradamus, though, not the Nostrum or whatever. In Ridley Scott's 1979 film, Alien, Ripley fights for her life on the spaceship Nostromo as an alien creature boards stowaway after her crew went to investigate a distress call from an asteroid. I think the, I think the ship is called Nostradamus, not Nostromo, but I, I, I'm, I, I, but I, I definitely think the ship is incorrectly named, but I, I'm not 100% certain. You did not get a point. Okay. Uh, uh, Brian, it, 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 it was a planet, not an asteroid. It it, it was the Nostromo. Was it? Yeah, yeah. This chat. I, I'm gonna leave this one up to you because the correct answer here is that is the wrong part. And Brian, you have submitted just enough of a correct answer that I'm going to leave your fate in the hands of chat. Chat, is a moon a planet? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess chat has to give the uh, yeah, give us a give us a Captain yeah, Fubar, everyone I saw says no. no. Everyone says I am no. sorry. You still get a point, Brian, but Okay, you do not that's get one two point. Points. I'll take it. All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, but I do remember it was the Nostromo. All, All right. right. Next part. Scene. In this scene, Ridley is trying to disengage the self-destruct sequence of the escape pod she is in. Uh, I would like to take this one. Okay. You said Ridley. Her name is Ripley. Okay. Apologies here. That is me being dyslexic. Oh, my <laughs> God. I am so, so sorry. I'm a little dyslexic. It is Ripley. Apologies. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Say it, say it again. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> In this scene, Ripley is trying to disengage the self-destruct sequence of the escape pod she is in. Um, no, she's trying to, she doesn't get into the escape pod until the very, very end. She's not in the escape pod. That's the mistake. She's in the ship trying to initiate a self-destruct self sequence. Yeah. You got the flaw correct, but you didn't No, you got the correction correct as well. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, wait, what was the ambiguation? The ambiguation was this did not take place in the escape pod. Right. However, you said that she was trying to initiate a self-destruct self sequence. This is not this scene. 
It's not that scene. It's not the scene because okay. the dialogue is correlative to it. Got it. So so wait. So so do I get one point or? I'm gonna say you get one point. All right. Just I'll because take he it. tacked on some extra there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. For the last, the dialogue. Ripley, mother, turn on the Heaney unit back on. Mother, mother, the ship will automatically destruct in T-minus five minutes. Ripley, you bitch. Yeah, I, I know that the you bitch was, is directed not at mother, right? It's directed at the, at the, 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 the alien, right? But I, yeah, I, haven't, I just haven't seen this movie in so long. Uh, uh, can, can, can we do a team point? I, I just want to help you because I'm about to break away and get ahead. Oh, no, I will okay. allow no, a team no, point. It's okay. I, 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 I'm certain there's other movies. You know, like we're, go, we're, going, we're going older into movies, so, you know. There's one final movie after this. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, 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 I think you're right. I think the trick is uh, it's Aliens, the sequel, yeah. where she famously is in the forklift, and she says, get away from her, you bitch! And she is talking to the mother alien. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think the trick is that he's trying to get us to conflate the fact the that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. the ship's computer was called Mother in Alien, which, by the way, uh, 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 Ridley Scott famously, uh, uh, he, he, uh, he was thinking of Hal, and he was thinking of uh, Hal was famously the letters IBM shifted a little bit, uh, uh, six letters uh, away. And he came up with mum, M-U-M, and then that ended up morphing into mother in the script. And oh. so they always refer to uh, mother as the computer. So, so she would, in the dialogue, say, mother, what was the line of dialogue again? Ripley, mother, turn the heating unit back on. Mother, mother, the ship will automatically destruct in T-minus five minutes. Ripley. You bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I don't so think got, I don't bitch, think she you, says yeah. you bitch. Yeah. I think she would say, "God damn it!" Is this y'all's final answer? I think so. Unfortunately, y'all did not get the dialogue point, as the error was in "Mother, turn the heating unit back on." Mother. In fact, oh. this was the cooling unit. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! This does leave Not us real. at a point total of 9 and 11, Mike and Brian. Okay. Well. <laughs> it's not, it's not. <laughs> Mr. 9-11, all right. It's all down to this one. <laughs> it's all down to this one, and I picked a great movie for this. Well, it comes full circle. That's pretty, yeah, yeah. That's some, some excellent writing. <laughs> In Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and oh. Love the Bomb, group captain Mansfield is... Uh, fighting for the future of the world as he tries to get the recall code to a squadron of nuclear bombers the rogue general had just sent out to Russia. In this scene, our protagonist is able to find the recall code in the writing of the now-dead General Ripper after the base is infiltrated by the Secret Service. He mutters to himself the following while reading. Peace on Earth, P-O-E. Power of Essence, P-O-E. O-P-E? Uh, oh, God. I, I could take a stab at the last one if if you don't have anything. Yeah, I I, I don't I I've, I love this movie, but I mean, I again this is uh, the one I've the, seen the, years. the last one. The dialogue it's it's not power of essence, it's purity of essence. That nets you two points, Brian. All right, all right. Uh, and then w what are the first two parts again? In the film description, in Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, group captain Mansfield is fighting for the future of the world as he tries to get the recall code to a squadron of nuclear bombers the rogue general had just sent out to Russia. It's not bombers, right? It's just bombs, I believe. It's the... Ro well, there's only one... There's only one plane left... So it wouldn't be a group of bombers. Like, everyone got the message except for one bomber. Yeah, it's just... Uh, and Mansfield, I don't think, is the one who was trying to get the code. He was the one trying to get the bomb dropped inside the war room. Uh, break them into the two parts of it. Sure thing. In the film description... 
and Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb, Group Captain Mansfield is fighting for the future of the world as he tries to get the recall code to a squadron of nuclear bombers as the rogue general had just sent out to Russia. That is a film description. Okay, that's not Mansfield. Or is it Ripper? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's unfortunately, I don't, I, don't, I don't recall the names. Um, that's why I picked them. I remember, uh, I, re- I remember the uh, I remember the actors. I don't remember the the actual characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So the description one last time. Oh. In Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film. Okay. Doctor- real quick. Real quick. Could be he's throwing us the wrong year, but I think 1964 tracks because 1967 was 2001, I believe. Yeah. Doctor Strangelove, or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Group Captain Mansfield is fighting for the future of the world as he tries to get the recall code to a squadron of nuclear bombers the rogue general had just sent out to Russia. So yeah, so it's so it's certainly not a squadron because it, it's yeah. I I I'll, I'll I'll take the hit on that one and and maybe you can save us on the other. Uh, I, I'll say I'll say it's not a squadron. It's the lone bomber. Mike, do you have any answers? No, yeah, that, yeah. That, unfortunately, this is one I haven't... Unfortunately, y'all do not nab the point. The name was, in fact, wrong in this segment of the question. Damn it! Dr. Strangelove or How I Stopped Worrying... Uh, and no, Dr. Lo- Strangelove's fine. It's the group captain. His name is wrong. Okay, what is his name? Do y'all want to take Mans- a stab at trying to so, get it? Yeah, it's so not Mansfield. It, it's Ripper. It's Manson. It's, uh, it's uh, Manly... Manish. Unfortunately, Man neither Drake. of you grabbed the point. Oh, man! Uh, Is it Manish? <laughs> Manish. Mike, you get one chance to correct yourself. You said it in your kind of little tangent oh, I, there. I, I, oh, yeah, no, no, no. I was just, I was just coming with man names. Well, no, well, no, no, you, no, better, you better, you better pick one. You better chance. pick one. Um, well, I, I, yeah. I, I, just I, say one. Say one. Manly. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, so close. Unfortunately, the correct one is Mandrake. <laughs> oh, man, Drake. Oh, no way. No way. That's, yeah. All right. In our scene description, in this scene, our protagonist is able to find the recall code and the writing of the now dead General Ripper after the base is infiltrated by the Secret Service. This is the final question of this game. Wait, wait, that was the question? This is the final one, as you earlier got the dialogue already. Okay, go, go ahead. Say it again. All right. In this scene, our protagonist is able to find the recall code and the writing of the now dead General Ripper after the base is infiltrated by the Secret Service. Oh no, it's not the Secret Service. It's it's the 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 uh, U.S. Air Force. No, it's the Royal Air Force. No. No, yeah, I, it's I, not I, Secret I, Service. I, I'm going to say Royal Air Force. I do not remember. Brian, you almost had two, but unfortunately, it is not the Royal Service. Uh, it is, and I wasn't quite able to find the exacts in the dialogue at the time, but it is a faction of the U.S. military. So, no, you did not get it, but you got one point. Brian, this brings the game to 9 and 14. Mr. Brian Brushwood, you have awesome. won tonight's game. Yeah! And you get a prize. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, wait, what do I get? Uh, just a moment. I need to pull up a separate tab here Uh-oh. to explain what this gift is. Okay. Oh my gosh. I don't even want to know what to do. We, we got a car last week. Oh, there's a, what there's a... is going on? Okay. This looks like a prop out of Dr. Strangelove. Uh, it's very mid 20th century. It's uh, uh, this hard is... shelled. <gasps> Can I guess? Uh, you may guess. Uh, is this like an eight millimeter projector? Uh, in 1940, the company River uh, made the P90 eight millimeter projector that you now own. <gasps> Whoa! Wow. Holy crap! Wow! Awesome. Look at this! Holy <laughs> crap! This is so much better now that we're playing for actual prizes. Oh my god! We got to do a modern rogue episode <laughs> and yeah, make a amazing. movie on eight millimeter <laughs> and play it using this. That's amazing! 
Uh, thank you so much. Who, who do we have to thank for this extravaganza? Uh, in fact, that is something I had found previously. So this is now in the hands of you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have fun with this. This will be amazing. Thank you so much, Nate. What do you got to promote? Uh, I actually have to promote the Great Night Pod at gmail.com. This is where you can send in games, links, and anything else you'd like us to review on the show. I check it very frequently. Thank you so much for being here tonight, folks. That was a great game. Uh, 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 standing ovation. Here we go. This shit's getting way too complicated for me. Thank you very much, <laughs> President Obama. <laughs> um, hey, man. Uh, uh, Mike, what did we yeah. learn today? Um, well, you know, we actually learned that uh, sometimes uh, an assassination attempt can actually be a legitimate assassination attempt. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we learned that uh, William Clay was not the titular character that Hans Gruber uh, was listed as in IMDb. Yeah, and we also learned that uh, Pete was, uh, it was intended to be shot, not, or it was not oh, intended to be shot, but was in instead intended to be killed. Yeah. Not, yeah. Uh, not uh, Phil, uh, Phil, rather. Here, here, here's to the purity of essence. Here's to the Bonnie situation. <laughs> uh, here's to... How many of the other things can we remember? Those were great picks for movies, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Mike, what do you got to promote? Um, I've got a new record coming out uh, very, very soon. It's based on the role-playing game Paranoia, which came out in 1983. It's a really, really fun game, and and uh, and it's a it's an instrumental record. That's all. Each each song is inspired by a bunch of the com elements of that game. So. That'll be happening in the next uh, couple. It should be dropping in the next couple of weeks. Heck yeah! Uh, all right. Uh, 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 God bless to Justin Robert Young, who's doing the Lord's work by going to the Republican National Convention. Uh, we'll be back for the bones later on. Uh, uh, we, I, I assume Justin will still be out, so we'll figure out who we have for that. That'll be another surprise. In the meantime, everybody, check out World's Greatest Con new episode. The greatest magic show in the world was a lie. Who, but who are they lying to? That's the question. Let's get drunk and laugh tonight. There's never been a greater great night. Diamond Club hopes you've enjoyed this program. <laughs> I don't know how much of that made it. <laughs>